You have to have a desire, right? Attitude is just as important as aptitude. We can teach you a trade, but you have to want to work. Now his welders are being paid more than his nuclear engineers in San Antonio. Produced by Podcast Architects. Welcome back to another episode of The Path Forward. I'm here in Dallas, Texas, TexEdCon23, and I have a guest from Joris, Chris Corso. Did I, did I nail it? You nailed it. You got it right. Okay, so general contracting, I have no... What does that mean? If I'm a, if I'm a student out there or I'm, I'm in college and I'm looking for a trade, what, what, is that, what does all of that entail? Well, let me tell you a little bit about Joris. We've been around for about 60 years. Okay. The company was started by a man named Leo Joris. His son, Gary Joris, took over the company in the 70s, I believe. And we basically started out in San Antonio as a general contractor that was working on all different types of jobs. Education, uh, it ended up being uh, kind of their forte. And okay. so from the 80s and 90s, they grew from a fairly small uh, K through 12 builder to today we're one of the top K through 12 builders in the state of Texas. So we've gone in revenue from in the 90s, I think they were at $30 million, and now we just passed the $1 billion mark. Very nice. And our market has changed now. We have offices across the state in the major cities except El Paso. Um, aviation is the newest market. We interviewed for the new San Antonio Airport last Monday uh, with Answer Advisory yeah. Group, your old company. Well, we're hopeful for that. We're in a partnership with Austin Commercial, who has built airports across the United States. So we're trying to create a new vertical in Joris and in San Antonio in particular for aviation. Um, we also build commercial office buildings uh, across the state. Uh, HEB is a client of ours. We have had a long standing relationship with them, build a number of their retail stores as well as their industrial facilities. Um, healthcare is another one. We're in another joint venture with another large GC on the $500 million county hospital in San Antonio. So we've grown now. We're right about 600 employees and um, glad to be in Texas. It's a great state. Great company to work for. Missions and values are very important to us. Now, we have some uh, some things in common, right? So I've got family in, in Alamo Heights. Uh, you, you've got family in Alamo Heights. Great school district, great superintendent. Um, and you've got a son that may be interested in podcasting and doing some of this. Tell me a little bit about him. Yeah, so I have a son that's a freshman at Trinity University. His name's Dylan. And uh, Dylan was a student body president at Alamo Heights High School. Very nice. Uh, he was in charge of the MuleTube program there. So he got very involved in not only video production and the broadcasting aspect, but he learned a lot of the aspects of the business. Uh, he's working on his major right now uh, at Trinity University to continue in that field. Very interested on the technical side of it, but he's comfortable both on the broadcast side and on the technical side, which is kind of a plus for him. Um, seeing you guys here today, I thought it'd be a great opportunity for him to learn a little bit more about what you guys do, how you got started. There might be an opportunity for you guys to visit. Very nice. And uh, Dylan, I, just a disclaimer, I twisted your dad's arm. I, I told him it's, there's nothing like embarrassing your own kids, so don't be too upset with him if you see this. I, I asked him to come on. <laughs> but um, it's interesting you mentioned that because, n number one, everything is interconnected, right? You, you're, you guys are, are uh, potentially um, working the airport job answer advisors my firm great company we've got it's just it's just i never cease to just to me amaze me how everything is interconnected and now you've got you've got a son that's obviously done very well interested in this in this crazy racket which i fell into by accident um but the guys at podcast architects are unbelievable i'm not a technical expert so i can't help doing it all i can i can sit here and talk that's about all i can do is run my mouth um but we do i know that they they take interns um and, Internships, apprenticeships is one of my passion, and I do a lot for answer advisory in that regard. So I think there is some synergy there. So if, if there's some interest there, by all means, let's set something up. And um, as I said, we're in San Antonio quite frequently for family, but let's see what we can, we can work out. And I, I, th I don't think there's a need. I think one thing we worry about is like, oh, well, if it's a freshman or sophomore, let's wait till they're seniors. No, why? Most stuff can be accomplished combination of virtual and like I don't I don't see the need of of not giving opportunities because of ah, let's wait till they're a senior no but, fantastic so. tell me how large is the company um I, that's a good question 
total, Jake, any idea? How many, how many total? Twenty, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And what year was it started? Uh, 2020. 2020. Wow. Yeah. How about that? That's and so, uh, and just a little bit of a backstory. Um, so they do a, an incredible job, but have a great partnership with Texas A&M, the Mays Business School, the Innovation Center there. And uh, that's kind of how I learned about the, the Mays Mastercast and hearing some of the stories of the alum there. And I'm not an Aggie, but my wife is, so I guess I, I, I count somewhat. Right. Um, but just hearing how they were, they were helping A&M and... and I consume, I think most of the country consumes with podcasts and short bursts, not, you know, no one watches the news anymore. Um, so I said, well, this may be useful. And as a, as a former superintendent, I knew we all know how critical messaging is. So it kind of all just seemed like a great opportunity. And now I enjoy to, to catch up, but also to learn about industry. Um, sure. So let me, let me ask you one more. So sure. for students, whether they be high school students or or college students looking to get into general contracting, construction, something in that capacity. What skill set? Give me two skill sets that are vital that you got to have. Well, first of all, you have to have a desire, right? Um, attitude is just as important as aptitude. We can teach you a trade, but you have to want to work. And there's a huge need right now in our industry across the board in Texas to hire qualified people. As a matter of fact, one of the biggest challenges, not only Joris, but all the general contractors in Texas are facing across the nation, as you know, is finding quality people. You got it. So I, th I think right now I'm actually chairing the North Chambers uh, Workforce Development in San Antonio. And as part of that, the city of San Antonio has a SA Ready to Work program where they've invested $200 million over the next five years to try to train and recruit wow. kids to get into the to get into our industry. And so we're working closely with the school districts, with UTSA, with Texas A&M, to bring a CTE program together that everybody can follow and kids will know not everybody's gonna be able to graduate from college, but at least they can have a career path starting as early as fifth or sixth grade and know this is the path I need to go. I heard the CPS chairman, which is a city public service, mention that right now his welders are being paid more than his nuclear engineers in San Antonio. So if that gives you any idea, even though uh, higher education may not be, a degree may not be the ultimate attainable goal, there are plumbers, there are welders that are making in excess of six figures. There's a big need for it right now. So the opportunity is there. It's just showing the career path to these kids how to get there. You know, what What we need to hear from, from the, if we want to do this better, right? You, you nailed it. Educators need to understand and evolve a little bit of how we think about career. Because when I was in when I was in school, it was you got to go to college. There's no other choice. And college is great. There's there's if that's the path, and that's the path. But I also think we need to hear what you just said is there are high wage, high skilled jobs, and the need seems to be exponentially growing. And if you can get your if you can get your butt up, and you got will, and you got work ethic, and that's you're right you can make an unbelievable living and have a, a, a satisfying job. And I mean, I'm, you guys, I can't imagine, got all kind of creative stuff that would be that would blow your minds that you're building. Who wouldn't want to be a part of that? Um, I, I love that. I love that you said CT, man, now you're talking my language. So you're, I like that you're also help guiding that. We don't ask business, educators, but we don't ask business to help us I don't, not just with, hey, give us a donation or, or help us with this or cut a ribbon. Like, we need you guys, guide, guide our curriculum. Help us. What is really the job? What does it look like in practice and how is it evolving? Because you're seeing things right now that, you know, will, will transcend what we think is possible uh, for construction, for growth and all that stuff. So uh, it's just amazing. So let me ask you this. Did you try to get him to come into your deal? And I mean, did you get the sun? Did you get him a couple of nudges at some point? Hey, did you think about this? Did you? Actually, I went to the University of Texas and I have a degree <laughs> in radio, television and film. Oh. <laughs> and so I encouraged him not to get into the industry, quite frankly. Oh. Uh, communication, School of Communications, I will say, is probably a skill set, though, that I that I took away from my degree that I use every single day. And, which and is, especially yeah. in the industry that I'm in right now. So. Uh, I encouraged him to go into business or law, but he right now is passion is behind the behind the camera or in front of the camera. And so I'm going to encourage him to follow his dreams. He had an opportunity to go to the University of Nebraska to the Johnny Carson School of Me Media there. Yes. And he 
passed on it because he got a great opportunity to go to Trinity, small liberal arts school in San Antonio. Yes. So um, it's a great start for him, and I'm encouraged about where he is right now in his life, and um, hopefully he'll he'll find his uh, find his path. But he's very passionate about this industry right now, and I'm real happy for him. That's a that's a yeah. funny. So you threw me a curveball because usually yeah. it's like, yeah, I want to do him, but now you started down the path, and he took that that path. So that that's just. That's funny. Um, I got so many stories about, yeah, you know, I wanted him to do do this, but he's doing this. And uh, it's it's good that you're encouraging this passion, right? But, Thanks. I appreciate that very much. Well, uh, it was good spending some time with you. And um, I think we got a lot a lot of follow-up discussions to have, maybe for business, maybe for sure. internships. And um, it's always a pleasure meeting somebody in the industry, but also that likes to talk about education. So, Thank you so much. I appreciate the th time. Thank you for joining us. You bet. Produced by Podcast Architects.